important factor in risk and emergency management. It should not be forgotten that late, incorrect or lack of information may result in incorrect or lack of measures. Both the ship's technical competence and the quality and certification of crew are important factors. All the procedures related to both risk and emergency situation management should be in rhythm and all personnel should be trained and drilled routinely about them. Besides, these procedures should be reviewed after routine and important incidents and necessary changes should be the integral part of a good risk and emergency situation management. Recruitment and the job descriptions are also other vital issues. The authorities and organizations should be very careful about employing qualified staff <coughs> and identify their duties and responsibilities on the emergency situation management process clearly. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tathan, for a detailed presentation on emergency situation management. Uh, before I introduce the next speaker, I'd just like to remind participants that, uh, or take the opportunity to remind participants that Turkey is hosting the VTS Symposium in 2012. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, there's a very nice booklet uh, available uh, on the desktop just behind uh, the sound people out the back there. Our next speaker is Captain Terry Hughes. Terry's another shipmaster come ashore. He's also been a senior lecturer in principal maritime studies and a specialist in simulation as well as VTS operations and training. Terry is also a fellow of the Nautical Institute and Royal Institute of Navigation. You wouldn't believe it, but a younger brother of Trinity House, chairman of the personnel and training working group of the Isle of VTS Committee. Terry also likes to refer to as the Mad Hatter of ETS. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Neil. Good afternoon, everybody. I can't see a thing up here with all these uh, star lights. Anyway, will someone lock the doors? There's no escape till I've finished. Is there a need for further training, VTS to VTM? Well, well, we'll see what I have in mind. SOLAS Chapter 5, Regulation 12 is quite clear. The use of VTS may only be made mandatory in sea areas within the territorial seas of a coastal state. And the guidelines on VTS, which it refers to, of course, are in IMO Resolution 85720. Now let's look at the team. The first member of the team is the master. And that's my ship. Very fine ship, I've got full, fully qualified crew, and having attended a VTS awareness course, I know all about VTS. I do, you know, I do. The second part of the team is the pilot, Mr. Pilot. Very important man, this. I bring him on my ship because he has all the local knowledge that I need. He doesn't take control of the ship away from me. He's there just to help me with the ship. And it may happen sometimes that uh, if a mistake is made or because of the handling or the weather of the ship, I can take over control of my ship at any time I want. But the pilot is a very important member of my team and he joins my bridge team as soon as he comes on board. And the third member of the team is the jolly old VTS operator. He is also a very important person, and I happen to have a qualification. I, have, I am a qualified VTS operator, and the beauty of this little piece of paper I have here, I got my accreditation at a, an organization that was actually accredited for VTS training. It's very important for me to have this piece of paper because it means I can move on. I can move to other ports in the world that accept this, so accreditation is extremely important. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the team. And being a very good person, 
and having this piece of paper, I promoted myself as VTS manager. Now this was actually presented to me by a VTS manager, so I assume this is what they wear when they go and play golf or something. And I learned a little bit about law. UNCLOS, of course, is the United Nations Convention of Law on the Sea. And Article 1, Line 4 is very important to us. Because it says that we can take all sorts of measures to protect our interests and the purpose of the best practical means possible at my disposal. And I shall endeavour to harmonise policies with others in the area. And this is very useful, of course, in international waters. So I then applied for a job at a mandatory reporting system. And being qualified, I got the job straight away. And IMO Resolution 85120 talks all about ship reporting systems. And of course, mandatory ship reporting systems are adopted by the Maritime Safety Committee on behalf of IMO. There are other ship reporting systems in the world uh, which are either mandatory or voluntary. I personally like the mandatory ones. Now, the interesting thing about mandatory ship reporting systems is that they are managed from a VTS center. They often have VTS in the call sign, and they have similar procedures to VTS. And any navigational assistance which they may have is obviously approved by IMO or through the Maritime Safety Committee. They will provide information. They may even organize traffic and they may provide navigation systems, as I already said. So, when I, as a master, come into the area, with all these acronyms, what the hell am I entering here? Is it a VTS? Is it a Vessel Traffic Management Information System? Is it a Vessel Traffic Center? Is it, you know, who am I talking to? Very, very difficult for me to know what I'm in, because I'm in a VTS area, reporting to a VTS center with VTS in the call sign, and I know that there are VTS operators in the center. Very, very confusing, particularly as the manufacturers also are selling uh, VTS centers, if you like, authorities, vessel traffic management information systems or vessel traffic systems. Very, very difficult. There's no consistency at all. Now, let's look at some of the factors which affect the mariner and the VTS. Some of them are very common, so let's go through them. Confusion. Status. Is it a VTS? Is it not a VTS? Some VTSs are very confused because they've been sold a vessel traffic management information system, so are they a VTS? Can I give information? What can I do? Now, vessel traffic management. I can get very pompous here because now I've been promoted. I have now become a vessel traffic manager. I feel very pompous now. Now the interesting thing about this definition is that the key words I've highlighted, they're very similar to VTS. Safety, security, efficiency, protection. The only difference now I've got is in all <coughs> navigable waters. So that we have now a big difference. So if I can have vessel traffic management in all navigable waters, that means, of course, international waters, does that mean we can have vessel traffic management, let's say, in where there's areas of ship reporting systems? Now, as a ship's master, I'd be very happy to uh, go along with vessel traffic management, but no one's going to take control of the ship from me in the middle of the ocean. Very happy to pass data as long as I know that the data is secure and who I'm passing it to. Interesting thing about VTM, it does not mean vessel control. That's one important thing as far as the master is concerned. But however, VTS is and will remain one of the core elements of VTM, primarily in territorial waters and IMO adopted areas in international waters. I think that's very important. I heard earlier on today that VTM can do without VTS. I wasn't quite sure what that meant, but uh, no doubt I'll find out. Now, vessel traffic management. I have here ILA, which to me is the International Grand Central Station. And during the 